If you're looking for an extra adventure on your next trip to Grand Teton National Park, let's talk about all of my favorite lakes to swim in. Hey friend, my name is Ash. I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt In My Shoes. And I worked as a park ranger in Grand Teton National Park. So I know this park really well, all the ins and outs. And today I thought it would be fun to talk about some of my favorite lakes to go swimming in because Grand Teton has a lot of different lakes and there are some great hiking trails and things that you can do in this park. But one of the funnest things for me to do when I'm there is to take some time out and go either swimming or canoeing or uh, stand up paddle boarding, anything like that. Uh, it's a really nice way to relax while you're surrounded by the beauty of the Tetons. So let's talk about my favorite swimming lakes in the park. So the first lake that I wanna mention is Phelps Lake. And Phelps Lake is towards the southern part of the park, right up against Death Canyon, which is just a beautiful canyon to hike in. But if you get to Phelps Lake, the reason that this one is so much fun to swim in is because there's a giant jumping rock so you can jump off of this rock into the lake and it's a really fun experience. I have jumped off of this rock many times. Uh, you will wanna be really careful when you get there. Make sure that you scout it out. Make sure the water is deep enough below it. Uh, it's about, I would guess, probably about a 30, 25 to 35 foot jump. Uh, but it's really fun and this lake is just beautiful. It stays pretty cold, but it's a great experience to have. Okay, so I wanna show you kind of where this is because it's not marked on anything. It's not something that really a lot of people know about. And so I'm looking here at the map. This is a backcountry map. It shows all the backcountry campsites. This is Phelps Lake down here. So it is the very Southern part of Grand Teton. You've got the town of Jackson down in here. You'll take the Moose Wilson Road to access this part of the park. You will want to pay attention to that as well. There are length restrictions on this road. Basically what you'll do is you'll come in here and you'll park at the Death Canyon Trailhead and then you'll hike to the Phelps Lake Overlook before dropping down. It's a good amount of elevation drop to get down to the base of this lake. And then once you reach the lake, you'll go around this way, you'll pass this, there's a couple backcountry sites back in here. You'll pass that and go down here and you'll find the jumping rock just beyond those campsites. So it's just right down here on this northeastern part of the lake shore. You can't miss it, it's a giant rock and it's pretty easy to get up and then you just jump in from there. You can, park down here and go to the Lawrence Rockefeller Preserve, parking there and then taking either the Lake Creek or the Woodland Trail up to Phelps Lake. And then once you reach the shore of Phelps Lake, then you'll head around this way to get to that rock. I recommend going from the Death Canyon Trailhead if you're looking for the shortest hike time. It's about two miles each way to get down to this jumping rock from there. The next lake that I wanna talk about that is great for swimming is String Lake. This is probably my favorite lake in the park to actually swim in. Uh, it stays a little bit warmer, it's shallower, it's a really small lake actually. And so, uh, but it's right there at the base of the Tetons. So you have just spectacular views from here and uh, the lake is just perfect for swimming in. A lot of people love to come here with canoes and kayaks and stand up paddle boards as well. Uh, you can zip around the lake on those really easily because it's just, again, a pretty small lake, but it also gets shallow enough that it's great for kids if you just wanna swim along the shores. Uh, it's a really fun lake to swim in. Looking at a map of Grand Teton, so you can see just, again, Grand Teton has so many bodies of water, so many of these beautiful alpine lakes, but some of them are better for swimming than others. String Lake definitely is. So String Lake is this little lake right here. Uh, it's right in between Jenny Lake and Lee Lake. But what's nice about this one is you can just drive right up there. Um, you'll park here. There's a picnic area and then just a nice swim beach where you can hang out and get in the water. If you're hoping to canoe or stand up paddleboard, anything like that, there are not rentals at String Lake or anywhere right there. 
And so you will need to bring your own. If you don't have your own, then you can rent them at Dornan's, which is in Moose, and then bring them up to the lake yourself. Uh, if you do it that way, then that's really nice. They have all of the permitting all taken care of, so you can just rent it and take it up there. If you bring your own, then you do need to get a permit, uh, regardless of what it is, if it's a paddleboard or anything like that, you'll need a permit from the park to be able to put it in the water there. Here's where they talk about permits on the official Grand Teton website. I will link this in the video description. Coming down here, you'll see, so you do need a Grand Teton boat permit regardless of what you're putting in. If it's like a little tube or one of those um, blow up swimming mats or something, then you're okay. But if it's an actual canoe or paddleboard, anything like that, then you will need one of these. And so you can read about this here. You can get your permit on recreation.gov or you can stop at a visitor center in Moose or Coulter Bay and pick those up. So you will need to do that. Just make sure that you do that before you put it in the water at String Lake or at any other lake in the park. As you scroll down, you'll see that there's another decal, this invasive species decal for the state of Wyoming. If you have something smaller, so you'll see here if it's 10 feet or less, paddleboard, anything like that, then you don't need one of these. But if it's longer than 10 feet or it's not inflatable, then you will need to get one of these as well. So putting your own gear and equipment into the lakes here does require a little bit of extra work, but it's really fun. Um, these decals are good for one year. And so if you're hoping to be in the water for a few days during your trip, then it will be worth the cost to do this. Uh, if not, if you just don't want to deal with it, again, you can rent um, either at Dornan's or I'll talk about uh, where you can rent on Jackson Lake so that you can still paddle around without having to worry about all of these permits. Something that is really cool about String Lake is that you can actually, if you canoe or paddleboard all the way to the top of String Lake, there's a portage there that's about, it's 0.1 miles, it's pretty short, uh, where you can pull your equipment out of the water, walk it over to Lee Lake, which is right next door, and then put it in Lee Lake. And I love doing this because most people don't do that. Um, Lee Lake stays really quiet. It's right at the base of Mount Moran, so you just get gorgeous views from here. But you will feel like you have Lee Lake all to yourself because usually there's not that many people up there, especially if String Lake is really busy, Lee Lake is a really good other option. And I just wanna show you here on this backcountry map. So again, we have String Lake right here. You'll go all the way to the top and then portage over and then put in here at the bottom of Lee Lake. And what's so cool about Lee Lake, not only can you just paddle around this lake for, you know, as much as your heart desires and then go back down through String Lake back to the parking area, but also Lee Lake has some great backcountry campsites on it. And so some of these are right on the water. You can camp right on the shore of the lake and have your canoe or your paddleboard with you so that you can hang out, paddle around, have it all to yourself. So I have stayed in a couple of these campsites up in here and hands down, that's like one of the most memorable and fun experiences that I've ever had in Grand Teton. So if you're looking for a little extra adventure and you love being lakeside, uh, that's a really great option, trying to snag one of these backcountry sites so that you can spend more time on Lee Lake and really enjoy the solitude there. The last lake that I wanna talk about that is great for swimming is Jackson Lake. And this is the biggest lake in the park. It takes over a lot of the map, so there's a lot of different things you can do here. Jackson Lake is the only lake in Grand Teton that allows motorboats that are more than 10 horsepowers. And so you can get in there and you can cruise around, you can go water skiing, you can do all that fun stuff here on Jackson Lake. So looking at the map of Grand Teton, Jackson Lake is towards the northern part of the park, but it's this massive lake right here. And so you've got several different access points here. You can go to Signal Mountain, they have a marina, they have canoe rentals, they have boat tours that run out of here. You can go up to Coulter Bay, same thing, they've got all of those things right there. There is another smaller marina up here at Leaks. 
Leeks is much quieter um, and they also have a really delicious pizza restaurant. So uh, we go up there a lot just for the pizza, but that's another option if you're wanting to put your boat in the water. If you're looking for a good swim beach, there is one down here at Coulter Bay. It has picnic tables and you can hang out. It's down there by the visitor center. The Signal Mountain area, you can go down by the lodge and access the lake from there. You can also go down by the marina and there's a whole bunch of beach there too. These beaches on Jackson Lake are rocky beaches, so they're not like, you know, nice sandy ones, but they are really fun to just hang out at the lake. My kids love throwing rocks into the water. We can hang out there for hours. So choose one of those two areas to access the lake and have a nice time swimming. Uh, again, if you wanna bring your own canoes or kayaks or paddle boards, uh, feel free to do that. Just make sure you have the proper permits for them. Uh, but at Signal Mountain and Coulter Bay, you can rent canoes or kayaks. So if you don't wanna bring your own, uh, there is the option to do that there. One more really cool thing about Jackson Lake, and I'm showing you the backcountry map here again. So you have Signal Mountain down here, Coulter Bay right here, you've got Leeks Marina up here. But you'll notice that there are a lot of campsites around Jackson Lake. And so what's really cool is you can bring in your boat and you can have a full motor boat here and you can boat over to these campsites and stay in these campsites. So again, just like a really cool experience. If you're looking to get off the beaten path in Grand Teton a little bit more, you can take a boat over to a campsite, you can stay overnight and just have the lake to yourself. So that's a really fun option as well. Phelps Lake, String Lake, and Jackson Lake are my top three favorite options for swimming in the water at Grand Teton. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, you really can dip in the water anywhere in the park if you want to. As you get further into the mountains, that water gets really chilly. <laughs> and so um, not as perfect for swimming, but those lakes down there in the valley tend to be really fun and a really great way to spend your afternoon. Uh, you can also float the Snake River if you wanna do that. Uh, that's a really cool option. There's some good scenic floats that you can do um, in the park itself, or you can go into the town of Jackson and catch some whitewater trips from there. Uh, so if you're a water lover, there is so much that you can do in Grand Teton and the surrounding area. And just one more note, you might be wondering about Jenny Lake because that is the best known and uh, most busy area of the park. And so a lot of people like to hang out around the Jenny Lake area. There is a shuttle boat that runs on that lake that takes you to the other side to make it easier to hike those trails on that side. And you can rent canoes and things right there by that shuttle boat. I typically don't like to spend a lot of time either canoeing or swimming in Jenny Lake. It's just not my favorite place to be uh, because there is just a lot going on <laughs> and it's not as quiet and peaceful of an experience. There's also not really a great beach area right there. And so I tend to uh, gravitate towards those other lakes if I'm looking for a really nice swimming experience at Grand Teton. I hope you have a great time on your trip. Uh, if you need any trip planning help, you can find more videos here at the Dirt In My Shoes YouTube channel. I also have tons of articles and a fully planned out trip itinerary over at dirtinmyshoes.com. So click on over there if you need extra help with that. And I am here for you every step of the way. I hope you have a great vacation.